Today we're going to be talking about Brown's and Lowry acids and bases. So hello everyone, today we're talking about Bronsted Lowry acids and bases. Remember that acids are proton donors and bases are proton acceptors. So acids and bases can have an equilibrium behavior that looks like this one. Here we have ammonia, which will be acting as a base, with water, which will be acting as an acid. This makes an equilibrium with the ammonium ion and hydroxide. Notice that ammonia, if you add one proton to it, makes it ammonium. And this uh, pair of components one base, one acid, differing by a proton we call a conjugate acid-base pair. Two species differing only by a single proton. Notice that hydroxide ion and water are also a conjugate acid pair because hydroxide ion can get that proton from ammonium. So here we have two conjugate acid-base pairs in this reaction. Here's another example with nitrate ion and bisulfite ion doing an equilibrium here forming nitrous acid and sulfite ion. So let's have a look and see if we can find the conjugate acid-base pairs here, nitrous acid and nitrite ion form a pair, and so do bisulfite ion and sulfite ion. Now think about bisulfite ion for a second. Now, unlike the others in this reaction, it could either accept a proton, by gaining a proton it could become H2SO3, or losing a proton it could become SO3 to minus. So here's the equilibrium gaining a proton and bisulfite ion acting as a base, gaining a proton forming the sulfurous acid. Or the other possibility is it could release a proton, and acts as an acid. So there's bisulfite ion here releasing its proton and uh, forming the sulfite ion and a hydride ion, or soon become hydronium. And you can see that this compound here, which can either act as an acid or a base, is special. It and others like it we call amphiprotic. Amphiprotic means can give or get a proton. Here's another good example. This is the bicarbonate ion. And you can see there's a couple different forms. It can gain a proton and become a carbonic acid or lose a proton and become the carbonate ion. Another good example of this is water. It can lose a proton, become hydroxide, it gain a proton, become hydronium. So this behavior of these things, which we're gonna call uh, amphiproduct compounds, depend on context. And we'll talk more about them in due course. Let's think again about water for a moment. And if you think about water for a minute, you can see that it does sum self-dissociation. So some water molecules do come apart this way. There is an equilibrium and the um, equilibrium constant is quite small. It's 1.0 by 10 to the minus 14. We call this KQ for the self-dissociation of water, KW for K water. So at 25 degrees Celsius, multiply the two constitutions together and you get KW or KQ for water. The two constitutions are equal to one another, which is the root of KW, which is 1.0 by 10 to the minus 7 molar. Consequently, if you think about the pH for a second, that's a negative log of the hydrogen concentration, and that is 7. But if you're looking closely, also the pOH, make that the negative log of the hydroxide ion, will also be 7. Now, this suggests something interesting, and the sum of these is 14, of course, at 25 degrees Celsius. And the idea here is that there will always be some hydride ion and some hydroxide ion in water, and when one goes up, the other goes down. This we call the leveling effect and worth thinking about. Again, another fact which we'll come back to in some detail. One more comment on strong and weak then. A strong acid or base dissociates completely. So let's look at the example of nitric acid. Here we have nitric acid, and this dissociates forwards only, releasing that hydride ion and forming the nitrite ion. There's no equilibrium. Notice there's no reverse arrow here. The nitrite ion does not act as a base, doesn't accept a proton and go backwards, okay? So this is, um, a strong acid. Now let's look at a weak acid or a base. And in these ones, some of them do dissociate, others not. So the sample doesn't dissociate completely. Here we have acetic acid, that's vinegar, dissociating at least the hydride ion and the acetate ion. Notice an equilibrium here is established, and the acetate ion can act as a base. In the reverse reaction, you can see it accepts a proton. So that an equivalent way of writing this would be to add water on both sides and see the hydronium ion was formed and the acetate ion. Okay, so those two are basically the same thing, just to indicate to you that they differ only by that water. Now the KQ of this situation here will be the guys on the right divided by the one on the left, get all the concentrations together, and uh, this KQ we're going to call KA because it's an acid-base dissociation uh, reaction, and for uh, acetic acid it turns out to be 1.8 by 10 to the minus 5 at 25 degrees Celsius. Also, just be reminded that acetate ion is a base, and so we could turn around and write its equilibrium reaction with water, acting like a base, getting a hydride ion from water, 
And you can see a couple different ways of doing this, either stealing one from water or just grabbing one. Either way, these two reactions only differ by a water molecule. And we could write the same KQ expression that we had before. So again, the same KQ expression over here would be the acetic acid there on the top, acetate on the bottom, hydrodine on the bottom. And also, if you look very closely, you see this is equivalent to acetic acid on the top, hydroxide ion on the top, and acetate ion on the bottom. Notice that these two expressions are the same. Interestingly enough, this is Kb for the acetate ion, and uh, that is, of course, at 25 degrees Celsius. Now, this suggests that Ka times Kb should be equal to Kw, the leveling effect we saw before. Notice also pH plus pOH equals 14. So here we have the conjugate acid base pair uh, relationship, where the Ka for the conjugate acid and Kb for the conjugate base multiply together, making Kw for water. Now this fact will allow us to calculate and predict pH, equilibrium behavior, hydrolysis, and really a whole bunch more. We're going to come back to it um, very soon, in fact, in our next lesson. So uh, that's about it for now. Uh, thanks, everyone, and see you soon. And do make sure that you see the next couple of videos uh, in this playlist for more on the topic, and have a look at the next lesson, lesson 18, Ka, Kb, Kw, and pH, where we'll go into the whole thing in quite a lot of detail. This is my dad's YouTube channel. It's awesome. So like, comment, and subscribe.